Welcome back to the final part of chapter seven. In part four, we're going to take our knowledge of balancing equations, of limiting reactants, of calculating theoretical yield, and then we're going to actually compare that to data that we might have gotten in the lab and be able to predict the actual percent yield based on the actual and the theoretical. So it basically, it's just a little extension of what we were doing <laughs> in the previous one. So in, if you take, if, if, if you want to get titanium metal out of the ore, okay, it, you'll see it as titanium oxide and there's carbon, okay, associated with it too. And of course, there's a lot more razzle dazzle to it than what, what I've got listed here. But the titanium dioxide plus the two moles of carbon is going to give us a mole of titanium and two moles of carbon monoxide. And so we have in this problem 28 0.6 kilograms of carbon and we have 88.2 kilograms of titanium 4 oxide or titanium dioxide and we're and it wants to know um, how much titanium okay now in the lab we actually produced which makes it our actual number, 42.8 kilograms, okay? Now, it's in kilograms. It wants the, it, I'm going to be comparing an answer in kilograms. So I can, um, I can either convert it to grams at the beginning and convert it at the end, or I can just leave it in kilograms. And it's still... Um, it still will balance everything and it still will um, work because we're looking at molar ratios and, and molar um, proportions rather than, you know, actually calculating um, something specific. What I mean is if I start with kilograms and I'm ending with kilograms, I don't have to convert to grams at the beginning because I'll just have to reconvert it at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it as kilograms. And then I'm going to use the number of moles. So um, I'm just I'm going to call it kilomoles. OK, <laughs> so there's one kilomole is how many grams of carbon and that's 12, right, because we always remember always remember carbon is 12. The TiO2, however, the formula weight is going to end up being um, 79.88. All right, and you all know how to do that. Okay, so that so that's it. All right, so um, well, you know what, I'm just going to go, I'll, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm going to erase this. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to convert it so I don't confuse you. Okay. God forbid. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to convert that to grams. So times a thousand grams is one kilogram. And I'll show you what I was talking about at the end. All right. And then, so that gets rid of kilograms of carbon. And then we said there are 12 grams of carbon and one mole of carbon. And we're comparing this to titanium because that's what we're making in the end. So one mole of titanium comes from two moles of carbon. Okay. And then we said our molar mass of titanium oxide, I mean titanium, sorry is 47.88. I didn't say that, but that's what it is. And I just got that from the periodic table, right? And so then that gets rid of moles, 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 um, and then grams of carbon, grams of carbon, and I'm left with grams of titanium. All right, and so um, it's 57,100 grams or 
to get rid of that, I'm going to 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 put that into grams then or kilograms, then I would have to divide that by a thousand grams per kilogram, right? Which gives me 57.1 kilograms of titanium. So see, I multiplied by a thousand and then I divided by a thousand. And so you don't have to do that when your initial um, thing is in kilograms and your final is in kilograms because it's still the same proportion. All right, so then I've got 88.2 kilograms of the TiO2. So I'm not going to change this one, and I'll show you how it works. Um, and I'm just going to do one, one mole of the TiO2 is the same as what we said, 79.88 grams of TiO2. And then the molar ratio between titanium and titanium dioxide they are a one to one and then one mole oh right that's moles and then we have 49.88 grams of titanium in one mole of titanium and that's going to give us and so that number is going to turn out to be 52.9 which is actually kilograms of titanium. All right, so which one is the theoretical yield? Remember, it's going to be whichever one is smaller. So the 52.9 kilograms. So my TiO2 is my limiting reactant. My theoretical yield is 52.9. Now I need to go back and look. It said that when I was actually doing this process, I got, I actually produced 42.88 kilograms, or 42.8 kilograms. So to get my um, percent yield, I'm going to take my actual divided by my theoretical times 100, and that should give me 80.9% yield. And that's pretty good. Okay, so now that's how I'm going to do percent yield is I have to know what was produced. And so you'll have three numbers. You'll have the two starting numbers and then you'll have the produced number that you don't use until the very end when you do the percent yield calculation. And there is your um, example for practice. All right, so since I'm doing this and we talked about the limiting reactant, we know the one that wasn't the limiting reactant is the excess reactant. And so it's the one that's not completely used up. And so since it's not completely used up, we're going to have some left over. And so we can also calculate that. So in the previous problem, Okay, we know that the 52.9, the 52.9 grams um, of TI, well, I guess I should write it on that side, sorry. The, I was able to produce theoretical yield of 52.9 grams. That was in the, is, that was in example 7.7. 7. That's where that came from, okay. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that number to figure out how much carbon I used. Okay, so I plug in my 52.9 grams because I know that was my limiting um, reactant production of titanium. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply that by to get it back to moles. I'm going to say one mole of titanium is 49.88 grams, right? Oh, it's 47. Was I saying 49 a minute ago? Sorry about that. Hope I didn't freak anybody out. 47.88 grams. Um, and then times the molar ratio between carbon, because that's the one I'm looking at, because this is going to be the excess. So I take the amount of titanium I could use, and I'm seeing how much um, 
how much carbon I'd use to produce that much because I know I have more carbon than I need so I've got some left over so how much did I use to make just the 52.9 kilograms that was okay so um, there's two moles of carbon for every one mole of titanium and then to get grams of carbon I know one mole of carbon it's the same as 12 grams or 12.01 or whatever you want to do. Okay, it won't make a hill of beans difference. Okay, and then once I do that, that's going to give me 26.5 kilograms of carbon. I had 28.6 kilograms of carbon to start with. Okay, so 28.6 minus what I used in the reaction with the titanium dioxide is going to give me 2.08 kilograms of carbon left over. And this is a really important engineering calculation because if you are using too much of something it costs money and if it's an expensive thing it can really cause you a lot of money so this is a very important thing to be able to do to figure out what you have in excess and then you can you can uh, translate that to a dollar amount and suggest using um, only 26.5 grams of the carbon and then you can save the company uh, that much because if you do this over and over across uh, uh, you know year to year and it costs you you know 10 cents a gram or something it can really add up all right and so that is looking at percent yield and excess reactants